What if I told you we were scared? We had ridden over 3,000 miles across the U.S., and we were on our way to Mexico, a country neither of us had been to before, never mind on motorcycles. But in two months of traveling, we had been warned by many people that Mexico wasn't safe anymore. The cartel are too dangerous, and American media wasn't painting a positive image either. We begin our report with the kidnapping of four Americans in Mexico. Two of them are safely back on U.S. soil. The other two are dead. The State Department issued a do not travel advisory for five Mexican states because of the high crime and kidnapping there. My advice is don't go to Mexico. Don't go to Mexico. Don't go to Mexico. Still, we were determined to find out for ourselves. Plus, we wanted real tacos. And to learn why these penises are a thing. But first, we had a few things to do in Tucson, Arizona, before we continued on to Mexico. There's a brewery celebrating all things moto downtown. Of course, desert riding is mandatory when you have a scrambler. There were friends to see, and we had loved ones to honor in the All Souls procession. This was my second time in Tucson, but my first time on a motorcycle, so I had to ride up Mount Lemmon. See, those kind of like little curves, those are the ones I find really fun. We were heading up to Windy Vista Point, which is just under 7,000 feet in elevation. Oh man, did it just get a little colder to you? Ooh! Yeah. My fingertips are fucking frozen. Whew. Besides being the home of the best curves in the area, it's packed with some great views. You even get a great view of the road we took up here. The stick moved so fast all of a sudden it yes, startled me. It it's all. startled you, yeah. Oh, I, yeah mean, I, I didn't scream really high pitch, right? No, not at all. But we didn't just ride up Mount Lemon for the views. We were meeting Jeff, one of the co-owners of Moto Sonora. I was at a bar a couple years ago when I saw some beers from Moto Sonora, and the can design just screamed motorcycles and racing. There's a lot of really cool can designs out there, and some of them are a little too busy, lots of colors, and they can be beautiful, but sometimes it's too much. We want something simple, easy to identify, and you know, we have a colored stripe on the side of our can that you know, denotes a different style. And so something easy you can recognize, it's not overly too busy, it's not that something that hurts your brain when you look at it. I loved the beer when I first had it. But as a guy who loves motorcycles and the desert, the name really drew me in. We had a bunch of other names that we tried to, we did come up with, we couldn't copyright. So we ended up with Moto, because it's motorsports, motorbikes, things that we love, and Sonora, which is the region that we're in, the Sonoran Desert, which is both the United States and Mexico. And we've traveled a bunch in, in both countries on motorcycles. So that's where we just decided to make it up and uh, that way we could have it to ourselves. Lots of people dream of having a bar one day just because they all want to have their cheers experience, you know. And as we travel a bunch, we like to, we like to overland, we like to travel by ground. If you travel by ground, you really get to experience everything in between and connect the dots to the place. And in doing so, we ended up having beers at different places along the way. And that sort of got us thinking about breweries and tap rooms and what would be better for us. And, and then we learned that, you know, the best beer comes from the closest brewery. And so we thought about having a tap room and importing a bunch of beers and we thought, well, Maybe we can just open a brewery and, and make our own good beers. And so we opened this place that we thought would have a nice environment for people to come and tell their stories and have good beers. And we make sure that quality is important. Check the glass to see if there's any lips, any lip stains or any stains on there. It's not. Rinse off the middle and then try and get a perfect pour. I'm gonna rinse off the side. Clean off the bottom, now we've got a perfect pint. I hope Moto Sonora becomes, I, I hope it already is, a place to gather at our tap room here and just tell stories and talk about adventures and enjoy good beer. They do a Moto Mondays at Moto Sonora and the Tucson Adventure Riders meet there the last Moto Monday of every month. The best part is you can park right in the beer garden. After a long, exhausting day on the bike, you know, whether you're riding to camp or whether you're riding to some small town, 
and you end up at a restaurant or a bar or a brew, whatever, you sit down and you're thinking of all the things that happened during the day and, and how, you, how you begin to start telling the stories and you grab a beer and no matter, you know, almost no matter what beer it is, it seems like that beer is the best beer you've ever had just because it's part of the adventure and part of the story. And that's why it's, it's good to talk to people that actually do real rides obviously like you guys, where you, know, you can appreciate every degree of humidity change or every shift in the wind or when the sun's right in the wrong place or right in the right place or when you get those long afternoon shadows of your bike when you're going down the road and the highway. It's, it's amazing. It's fantastic. Moto Sonora is a Tucson brewery brewing up delicious craft beers with super rad names owned by motorcyclists that are passionate and truly understand traveling on two wheels. When you travel by land, you know, from Mexico to Alaska, you can literally and figuratively connect the dots from point to point to point, all the way you go. And it, it sort of brings the world closer together when you do that. And Jeff understands what we're doing because he and his wife travel on motorcycles all the time. Our honeymoon was two weeks traveling through the Rockies on motorcycles. And they know there's no better way to earn an end of the day beer like a nice ride through the desert. This is Reddington Road, and once you get past all the vehicles who only go a few miles in, the road opens up and the real fun begins. Woohoo! Whoa! While Chris was pretending to be Malcolm Smith in the desert, I was preparing for the All Souls procession. So it was time to say goodbye to Brandon and go paint my face. If you're wondering why my face is made up like this, today here in Tucson is the All Souls procession. This year I'm gonna be honoring my grandmother who passed away in February, as well as my other grandparents who I've lost over the years. And Chris is gonna be honoring his uncle Andrew who passed away earlier this summer. After my grandmother passed away, we knew that we definitely wanted to try to be here in Tucson just so we can participate in this event. Now, the All Souls procession isn't just Day of the Dead. It's actually a bunch of artists that came together that tried to really incorporate a bunch of different faiths, religion, cultures as a whole in their perspective of death and give people an open space for their grieving process. The All Souls Procession is a beautiful Tucson tradition that honors multiple cultures who have an enlightening way of handling death and remembering the souls of those who have passed. And now we're in line for churros because my husband's a tub tub. <laughs> yeah, can I get a churro? That's all I want. Okay, he did burn some extra calories today doing Reddington Road, but he didn't burn that many calories. He had some calories he needed to burn off. Oh, got churros. Much better than Costco's. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. You can't even tell because you got it right on a black line. Cheers. <laughs> May all souls be happy. May all souls be healthy. So 
may all souls be well. Muchas gracias. Buenas noches. I absolutely love the desert. I lived in Tucson for over four years, and it stayed with me forever. That's why you can find the desert painted on my body as well as in my wedding band. But the desert can certainly be a hostile environment. You're in the desert. Don't touch anything. See this? This'll hurt you. See this? This'll also hurt you. I think this is one that might don't touch anything. Everything in the desert is trying to kill you. Some scale, look at Caitlin next to the cactus. It's a Suarero cactus. It's tall. With our time in Tucson winding down, we went to Gates Pass, like all lovers do, to watch the sun surrender to the west and paint downtown Tucson vibrant colors to the east. Kind of said that our time in Tucson is kind of coming to a close. So, you know, we've been here for a few weeks. In some ways, it doesn't feel like we've done that much, but we'll be back. And it's very beautiful. One thing still on our mind was all the warnings about Mexico. But twice while we were downtown Tucson, there were shootings right by us. Literally, one was right in front of us, just across the street, and the other was a block away while we were having drinks with friends. Well, we have new details on an overnight shooting in downtown. A man is in the hospital after Tucson police say he was found shot near the Coronado Hotel. If this is what we were experiencing in the U.S., what was going to happen in Mexico? The media continued to beat their drum of bad news. Thousands of Mexican troops are now patrolling very popular destinations like Tijuana and Ensenada. That's where more than a dozen vehicles were set on fire. State Department heightening its warning to Americans traveling to Mexico where violent crimes are on the rise, even in tourist destinations. The U.S. State Department wants all American tourists to think twice before traveling to Mexico. But as we were packing to leave Tucson, Mind Body Moto Girl dropped her love letter to Mexico. First, let me introduce myself. My name is Tammy, and I left my life in New York City about two years ago with one desire, to ride my motorcycle all around your country with no real plan, destination, or end date. So Mexico is a country that is so full of love and so full of joy and riding it on a motorcycle is such an amazing experience because it is such a big country with so many different amazing things to discover. Put all the negative stories aside because re regardless if they're true or not, it doesn't matter. They don't serve you in any way. It, it serves you in no way to know the negative stories. Um, all you need to know is to have a connection to your guidance, which will just skirt you around anything that's happening no matter where you are, whether you're in the States or you're in Mexico or you're in another country. I spent um, almost two years traveling around Mexico, went basically everywhere, and I didn't encounter one negative thing in Mexico. Um, I really didn't. It was all a bundle of love and joy, and it might sound cheesy. It is cheesy. I don't know. But I really didn't encounter anything negative, none of the negative stories that you hear about Mexico. And for me, I come from the perspective of mindset. I think that where you place your attention and your focus and your energy and emotions has everything to do with your experience. So I really encourage those that are interested in doing it um, not to be held back by any kind of fear. Thanks to Tammy, we were reassured and once again excited about riding through Mexico. Our friend Ryan let us use his garage to take care of a few motorcycle needs before heading south. And of course, he's a hands-on guy, which was much needed. So thanks, Ryan, for the help. That poor red car it did nothing wrong, and a Kia just unfortunately tried to cut over real fast and rammed the crap out of them. At least the key is okay, but 
hopefully the other person's okay too because it basically got t-boned and then that bitch right there is on her phone texting these are the dangers of the road oh uh, well actually that's i think the first accident i've seen that i've witnessed since uh, we've been on the road so that's good and hopefully we won't see many more of those. And even more hopefully, we're never personally involved in any of them. Arizona Guardian, stuck in the heat. Let me take you dancing. How you know it's been a while since you've done some long distance days. My feet are tingly. <laughs> like they feel almost squishy, but it's not because they're wet, it's just because they're tingly. Ah, little break. No idea where we are. Like 130 miles away from Yuma or something. Ah, welcome to Hillabend. Okay, yeah. It's pronounced Hillabend with an H because it's Spanish. That is truly how terrible our Spanish is. We're taking a little break. So far so good. Not too bad. I think I'm a little warmer than Chris is. I think the black jacket's helping the sucking that heat from the sun, baby. It's gonna kill me come summertime. <laughs> Why did I choose black? Holding you heals me, but loving you hurts my head. In Yuma, we stayed with Greg and his dancing cow wife Jess, whom we met at the stubborn American rally. It was Veterans Day, so it was an honor to have dinner with a bunch of veterans. Also, I found another motorcycle that fit me. Because it's like you weren't riding a bike all day. <laughs> the next day, we packed up the bikes and continued west towards San Diego. Into California and past the glamorous sand dunes to the land of expensive gasoline. Six seventy nine for gas. I said six seventy nine for gas. No wonder everybody's leaving. They can't afford to live here. They probably can't even afford to leave because they can't pay for the gas. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, it's been this expensive for a long time, I think, in this state. We race towards the setting sun with the Pacific Ocean just down the road. Our destiny was ahead of us as we finished our final miles riding west. It would all be south from here. Gigantic wind turbines gave way to mountains as the sun said goodbye and the lights of San Diego embraced us. I was completing my first time riding coast to coast on a motorcycle. We made it to our motel, one piece, not for lack of trying, cause Going through those mountains were freezing. Yeah, my hands were cold. I mean, that's, that's, it would be a really rough, prolonged ride at that temperature. Yeah. I want to say I, all I had was my gloves and my heated grips on coming down from Pittsburgh, and it felt like that. And that was low 30s. So. Yeah, I was anticipating us leaving earlier today, so I didn't put my leggings on. I should have worn a long sleeve shirt. Well, and you were wearing your freaking dirt bike gloves. Yeah, I'm wearing my kid dirt bike gloves that are like thin. <laughs> so, but we made it. We're okay. I'll go check in. Two things today. Chris and I have officially been on the road for two months today, November 13th. And we also are going to be crossing into a new country today. We're go going to be going to Mexico which Chris and I, both, we've never been to Mexico, but also neither one of us have ever been to another country with somebody special. <laughs> hmm. 
By special, she means somebody you're romantic with. Yes. Let's just clarify that a little bit. I, I'm not slow. <laughs> That's not what she's saying. Are you? Are you? That's not what I'm saying. One down, couple more to go. Just topping off some water, some good clean water before we head to Mexico. Still don't know Spanish. We're gonna be crossing the border at Tecate today and then riding down to Ensenada and staying there for about eight nights. A quick lube of the chains, then we packed our motorcycles. It would be our final time in the US for the next four months. Leaving the hotel in San Diego. And because we're so unprepared, we gotta go print some documents, our, um, our uh, proof of Mexican insurance, and get photocopies of our registration would be a good idea. And then when we cross the border, we're gonna have to do the FFM and the travel import permit, or the temporary import permit, the TIP. There's, uh, seriously, just a naked guy standing in the street. <laughs> Is he a naked man still in the intersection? Yep. Oh, yeah. Duh. Full on nude. Yep. What? Whoa. All right. That is California. No, we're not sponsored by Better Health, but this would be a good opportunity to mention that mental health is still very important. All my time spent in California, I've never seen that. Well, maybe you haven't spent enough time in Santiago. That's true. It does mean a whale to China. But that seems more like an LA kind of experience. Well, we got our documents printed, so we're good to go there. And uh, now we're just heading to the Tecate border crossing, which my phone was saying it's about an hour. More tickle. Other than last night, this is our first time using the Garmin. Oh yeah, I just started using this thing. I really should have been playing with it beforehand. No. Where the fuck did that car come from? What the fuck are these cars doing? on our way to Mexico if we survive California drivers. And California naked people. I didn't think it'd be this rural just outside the city. Now I understand why we're seeing so many motorcyclists. So mucho gracias is thank you very much, but mucho gusto is nice to meet you. Okay. Seems a bit tough, but all right. After we wound our way through the mountains, we could see the Mexican town of Tecate in the distance. Oh boy, I'm nervous. Americans in Mexico are being warned to stay off the streets tonight following a week-long wave of violence. It was time to drown out country. all the noise and see for ourselves. Nada to declare. Oh, Jesus Christ. Ugh. Assuming we one at a time? Uh, you probably could have came. Well, I don't know. I guess it's still going. Ugh. Good grief, these are terrible. And guess what? You're in Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in Mexico. We're in Mexico. Just <laughs> over the border in Mexico. But hey, that counts. Okay, let's see what all we need to do. But once we crossed that border, well, I had no internet, so I couldn't do my translator app. I didn't think it would literally be right at the border. I thought maybe some of my service would still blend through. No, it did not. Oh my God, we can't read anything. We definitely need to work on our Spanish skills because we have none. This is incredibly nerve-wracking. <laughs> Doesn't help that we don't fucking know any Spanish. Ah, we should need some Spanish. Also, speaking Spanish is different than reading Spanish. I feel like I'm going to have an easier time reading it than I am going to uh, speak my pronunciation. We had a very hard time trying to figure out the roads and what buildings were. Um, they have right on red in Mexico. <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, I guess so. That guy just went. 
Chris needed to get our money exchanged from dollars to pesos. So we found somewhere to park. I stayed with the bikes. He left and went to the bank. After a little while, he came back. Then we decided to let's, instead of eating in Tecate, let's just make sure we can get to our hostel here in Ensenada. So I think we're just gonna stay on this now. We just gotta get out of the city. That means, oh, green flash means it's about to change to yellow. Good to know. We're riding our motorcycles in Mexico. It's funny how two months ago, I was really nervous and freaking out about doing Tale of the Dragon. And now I've not only completed my first coast to coast on a motorcycle, I'm now riding in Mexico. And this is just incredibly thrilling. As we made our way towards Ensenada, we enjoyed the views while adjusting to the local driving patterns. We are now in Cincinnati. Oh wow, the coast is right there. It's not that I don't enjoy riding the motorcycle, but today is the first day I feel like in a little while that I'm been smiling while riding. We made it to Ensenada. We found our hostel that we're staying at. We're staying at Hostel Edka, which is kind of nice. We're in more of a suburban neighborhood, but not too far away from where all the action is, more downtown. So it's kind of nice. We're getting a feeling for like a real vibe here in Ensenada versus just the tourist attraction areas. We just went for a little walk to get a bite to eat. These are our first street tacos on the streets of Mexico in Ensenada. It's very good. It's dangerous. It's almost right across the street from us. So we'll probably be going there quite a lot. We don't speak like any Spanish, so that's pretty fun. We really had no idea what they were asking us for the tacos, but they were delicious tacos. They were absolutely great. How's that uh, salsa? Good, it's hot. Yeah. Very hot? Yeah. Also, I'm gonna go see how much Spanish I can learn by now. And then we went to a little octo, a market, and we ha I got some tecates to celebrate our arrival in Ensenada, because we didn't have any tecates in Tecate. I've been doing some research of where to eat, where to see, go. Our plan was to watch the Baja 1000, but after that, we were winging it. We were planning on spending at least a few months in Mexico, and all we knew was that we shouldn't ride at night. And that our Spanish wasn't good. Okay, see. Yep, that's my Advil. We didn't know that we would cause our own woes. Or that some of the main roads were still out from a hurricane. Uh -oh. 